Hello YouTube, Dr. Sola. So today I'm back at our mini grid. So before I get, there's a problem actually at the mini grid, but before I get there, let me um, give you a quick summary on our mini grid. So our mini grid is comprised of 12 solar X 15 kilowatt inverters, 48 solar X 5.8 kilowatt batteries. They're high, they're high voltage batteries, high voltage system. Um, we have, we have, we've built two systems. So here is system one. System one is supposed to have six inverters, but this inverter is not, is not working with it. System two is supposed to have six inverters as well. But this inverter does not want to communicate. It's being a bad boy. It does not like talking to everyone else. So he's in timeout. Each inverter is supposed to have four batteries. So 5.8 times four, that gives you an idea of uh, the capacity of each. And our four batteries, 120 volts, we're at about 480 volts in battery voltage. System two has that done. System one, on the other hand, only has three batteries. And hopefully by Thursday, we'll have four batteries each. So that's it in a nutshell. On, on PV, each inverter has about 20 kilowatts in PV. So if we multiply that by five, it's a hundred, actually it's a little more than that, it's a hundred per, a hundred per system right now. And on this side, same thing, we have a hundred per system on this side, a hundred on this system. So system one has a hundred, system two has a hundred. So that's 200 kilowatts in solar panels. That's it for the equipment, outside of the breakers and everything we've done. So someone had asked me a question. If one inverter is not outputting power, right, we did bring everything down. And this was in response to experiences we had at the other mini grid or micro grid we had done. The answer is actually no, because I went today, this room and this building is powered by a system, and I'll show you how it's connected later. And I've started turning, I turned these breakers off. I turned this one, this one, this one, this one. And then when I turned this one off, the power went off. When I turned it back on again, um, the master communicated with the EPS parallel box, and then power came back on again. So that's one thing I didn't explain to you, the EPS parallel box. So this little, this big device here, um, it weighs about 35, 40 kg, 42 kg actually. And it has multiple contactors, bus bars. It has our input and our output. And it has communications between it has communications between the inverter, master inverter, and it, and then it shows all the inverters that are connected. To. So the EPS parallel box um, has all our connections coming in. Um, it has contactors to switch between the grid or a gen and our system. So that's it. So so far, it's been pretty simple, stress-free, except here. Initially, when we just set up, we used bus bars. Um, today we decided, we changed and decided to use breakers. And since we've used the breaker, when the gen is not running, this will trip. So we don't know why it's tripping, it's 160 amps. We should make it, you know, I want your suggestion, what do you think? It was a little warm to the touch, it wasn't hot, it was warm to the touch. So what do you suggest? Do you think, do you think I should raise it to 200 amps? What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. So changes that are coming. One, we're bringing the incoming from the gen. We're going to do firmware updates to the inverter to allow it to start and stop the gen. So every inverter has to have it. And then the CT will be added to uh, compensate for the incoming. The CT only needs to be on the master inverter. It doesn't have to be on all the inverters. So that's exciting. And we will be able to run 100%. Um, let this manage the generator and also manage the inverters. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button. Once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Asheshe Omnia Hotel in Ogun State. Thank you for watching.